Georgia has a long history of elite tight end play from Ben Watson to Rand McMichael to Leonard Pope and Orson Charles. The list is long, guys. And in recent years, we've all seen it unfold right before our eyes. Kirby Smart and tight end coach Todd Hartley have taken Georgia's tight end unit to yet another level with the likes of Darnell Washington and now Oscar Dub, and of course, the incomparable Brock Bowers, who I believe is the greatest tight end in college football history. But we also know that Brock Bowers is off to the NFL. So what does Georgia's tight end room look like in this new post-Brock Bowers world? Well, for my money, Georgia's tight end unit remains extremely healthy and is still the best tight end unit in America. We just stepped on their face with a hot nail boot and broke their nose. We just crushed their face. What's up, guys? I'm Tyler, and this is Glory UGA Plus, where I bring you a small sample of what we've got going on for you on the Glory UGA podcast. This video is brought to you by our great friends at Alumni Hall, and this video is part three of a new daily mini series that I've been running, previewing every single position unit on the 2024 Georgia football team in celebration of the start of fall camp, which is actually one week from today. It opens one week from today. Thursday, August 1st. So I have a I will have a video for you every single day previewing a different position leading up to next Thursday. So if you identify as a diehard Georgia fan, which I think most of you probably do, if you haven't already, you're, you're going to want to go ahead and subscribe to this channel right now so you don't miss any of those previews. If you want to get fully up to speed on what to expect this season, if you want to get fully prepared for the 2024 Georgia football season, this is going to be your one-stop shop. So go ahead and subscribe right now. Like the videos, comment all the above. I greatly appreciate that. But all right, earlier in the week, I ran a video previewing the wide receiver unit, and yesterday I ran a video previewing the running back unit. But today... I want to turn my attention to Georgia's tight end unit, Georgia's post Brock Bowers tight end room, which despite the loss of the greatest tight end in college football history, that's my opinion, but what we can say objectively at the very least, the only two-time Mackey Award winner in college football history, despite the loss of that guy, I still believe this is the best tight end room in all of America. Well, why? Why is that? Well, I mean, it's not difficult, guys. Just look at the talent that's still in the room. Just look at the proven production that's still in that Georgia tight end room. So let's go ahead and start there. Let's start with the headliners, who I believe will factor in most prominently with this Georgia tight end unit in 2024. Now, this is where I get some pushback from listeners and some of you out there watching on YouTube. And that that's fair. I, I respect it, man. This is just a lot of this is just my opinion. So I respect people coming from different vantage points. It's all good. But if you've listened to me talk about Georgia's 2024 team at all this, this offseason, I know some of you are new to this channel, new to this podcast, finding us for the first time, but I've been running this Glory UGA podcast on the audio side for 10 years. I'm just now getting into the YouTube game. But if you've heard me talk about Georgia's tight end room at all, you know that I am all in on Stanford transfer tight end Benjamin Urosic. I have been singing his praises since day one, since the day the guy committed. And I understand that there is some reasonable skepticism when you hear me talk so glowingly about this guy that most you've never heard of. Because, I mean, let's, let's think about it, guys. Most Georgia fans, that's just the truth. Before he committed Georgia, most Georgia fans out there, even like the most diehard Georgia fans, had never heard of this guy. I mean, he played at Stanford. All right, he played at Stanford, who's been really bad for the past couple of years, played all across the country. Most Georgia fans are tuned into the SEC and the bigger teams around the country, not little Stanford out there in Palo Alto, who's been nothing for a couple of years now, has a new coach. I get it. I get why people don't know who Benjamin Rossick is. And I think there's still people who don't really understand who this guy is and are just now trying to get to speed with who and what Benjamin Rossick is. But make no mistake about it, guys. Benjamin Rossick was nothing short of elite at Stanford. I did a video about, I don't know, maybe two months ago now. So check this one out if you haven't already. I think you guys will enjoy it. It was a film session video where I preview, where I really kind of broke down how we use Brock Bowers in the George offense and compared that to how Stanford used Benjamin Urosic in their offense in the past three years. 
And it's remarkably similar, guys. There's a lot of carryover between what Urosic did at Stanford and the ways they used him and the ways that we use Brock Bowers and the ways that we can use Urosic in this Georgia offense. I think it's going to be a seamless transition. And the guy has been remarkably productive. Even if you've never heard of him, I mean, he hasn't been productive, guys. I've said it probably a million times this offseason. So for those of you who've heard me say it a bunch, I apologize. But I know we have some newer listeners who are just finding us. I'm going to say it one more time for everyone out there since we're talking about the tight ends. Over the past three seasons, there have only been three tight ends in all of college football that have put up more receiving yards than Benjamin Urosic. Who are those three tight ends? Well, you guess Brock Bowers, that's one of them. Michael Mayer from Stanford, an early second-round pick playing in the NFL, and Don Kincaid out of Utah, who's now starting in the NFL for the Buffalo Bills. That's it, guys. That's the list. Those are the only three tight ends over the last three years that have put up more yards than Benjamin Urosic. So when I tell you this guy is a proven do, proven production, that's what I'm talking about. And let's get a step further, guys. Now, again, I think Brock Bowers, greatest tight end in college football history. He is the Herschel Walker of my generation. Love the guy. The best I've ever seen at Georgia. Absolutely love it. I'm going to miss him dearly. But let's compare Brock Bowers in his first 22 games to Benjamin Urosic in his first 22 games. Now, why am I saying first 22 games? Because Benjamin Urosic missed half of last year with an injury, right? But his first two years, he played 11 games in his first year, played 12 games the second year. They didn't go a bowl game because of Stanford, right? So let's say Benjamin Urosic's first two years, his first 22 games, or 23 games, I should say, in Brock Bowers at Georgia, okay? So in that stretch, Brock Bowers, 82 catches, 1,275 yards. Benjamin Urosic, 91 catches, just under 1,100 yards, 1,098. So not quite on Brock Bowers' level in terms of like explosiveness, but he's also at Stanford with the quarterback situation they were dealing, which is not the quarterback situation we had with Stetson Bennett and then Carson Beck last year. So look, I'm not trying to tell you that Benjamin Urosic is better than Brock Bowers. He is not. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. I do not think that Benjamin Urosic is Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers is different, man. Brock Bowers is on his own level. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that Benjamin Urosic is not an elite player in his own right. Okay, just have to just keep that in mind. So I, I say all this, like I throw out all these numbers just to kind of give you context. I just want to give you context of the type of player that we're talking about here. You might not have heard of Benjamin Urosic before this year, but that's not because he can't play. That's because he played at Stanford. It's a function of where he played and the fact that Stanford's not a good. It's not a function of, of him not being that kind of player. He is that kind of dude. So I love him, and I think you guys are going to love him as well. I'm very confident in that, actually. Now, the pushback I really get, if we want to get more detail here, more specific, really the pushback I get when I talk about Benjamin Urosic is Oscar Delp. It's Oscar Delp, man. So whenever I bring up Urosic, invariably, I have people that want to say, no way, man, like, impossible. Oscar Delp is that guy. He's the best tight end on Georgia. He's the best tight end on Georgia's roster this year. And look, he may be. I love Oscar Delp. I'm not sitting here trying to tear Oscar Delp down. I was singing this guy's praises when he came out of high school back in 2022. Let's not forget Oscar Delp was ranked at least by 247 Sports as the number one tight end in the country coming out of high school in 2022. So I love Oscar Delp. I think the world of Oscar Delp. But here's what you have to understand when you talk about Oscar Delp and Benjamin Urosic. Oscar Delp, yes, is a tight end, just like Benjamin Urosic, but he doesn't play the same tight end role that Urosic does, all right? If you look at what we've done with Delp his first year and a half or so here in Athens, or really first full year playing, he has played that inline tight end role. He was groomed to be the guy to take over for Darnell Washington. When we have Brock Bowers playing that mover hybrid tight end role where he's going to be more of the featured weapon in the pass game, someone had to be, when we're in 12 personnel, which we run more than 50% of the time, someone's got to be more of that inline blocking tight end, which is what Darnell Washington did so well for us for a couple of years. And Oscar Delp was that guy last year. Now, that doesn't mean that can't change this year. I think Oscar Delp is a heck of an athlete. I think if he was asked to, could he play the mover tight end role that Brock Bowers played? Yes, absolutely. I think he could. That's really what he was coming out of high school. And he's had to make the adjustment and adapt to playing more of an inline role. And it's got to the point where I have on pretty good authority. He is one of the strongest pound for pound guys on the entire team. And he's still a really good athlete in his own right. He's put on a lot of good weight. And he's really got himself prepared to play that inline role. So 
when you think about that and you think about, okay, what does Benjamin Rosick do? He is a hundred percent a mover hybrid tight end like Brock Bowers. He's not a guy that you want to line up in line and just go out and like block all the, you know, the best defensive ends, the best defensive tackles out there in the country. That's not really what he does. He's a functional blocker. I would say he's not quite as good as Brock Bowers was, but I mean, he can do the job well enough to pose a threat, but that's not really what makes him great. What makes him great is his ability to hurt defenses in the pass game, stretch the field and just be a playmaker out there in the passing game. So we have to ask ourselves right now. All right. Do we really think that we're going to change those roles this year? Like, do we really think that we're going to move Oscar Dell from the inline role he played last year to Brock Bowers' mover tight end role this year? I personally do not think that will happen, okay? Because think about it this way, guys. If we move Oscar Dell from that inline role that he played last year, who do we have left to play that role? We don't really have anyone right now. Lost and Lucky, we'll talk about here in a minute, can he could function there, but he's not going to do it as well as Oscar Delp did because Oscar Delp spent all of last year growing and learning and developing and really mastering that role. We just don't really have anyone else right now in that room. As talented as that tight room is, we don't have anyone right now that's fully ready to play that inline role. Maybe some of the young guys can develop into that, but they're young right now, man. I don't know if you want to trust freshmen to do that right now. I mean, Oscar Delp, really has been groomed for that inline role and really improved over the course of last season. So I think you have to ask yourself, even though you love Oscar Delp, and I love him too, and I think he could play the mover tight end role, that hybrid tight end role, be like the featured tight end in the passing game. Do we want to move him there and then start all over from square one at that inline role and go through all those growing pains that Oscar Delp went through? Now we've We've come through those. We won't go through all those growing pains all over again this year when you already have a guy that went through those growing pains last year and is a much better player now at that spot than he was when he started in 2023. I, I don't think that's in George's best interest. So I personally think that Oscar Delt will remain in that inline tight end role and we're going to slide Benjamin Rossick into that mover tight end role that Brock Bowers played so well. Now, if that does end up being the case, if, that, if my projection ends up being correct, which it might not, I could be wrong, but this is my projection here. It's not that Oscar Dub will not get opportunities in the passing game. He is still going to get opportunities in the passing game, just like Darnell Washington did. But like Darnell, he's much more likely to end up with like 20 to 30 receptions and about 300 to 400 yards receiving than he is 50 to 60 receptions and seven to 800 yards receiving like Brock Bowers was the past couple years. So, I think that's the role that Delp's going to play. I project Delp to have somewhere between like 25, 30 receptions, probably 400 to 500 maybe on the high end yards receiving. And then I think that Yorosk is going to be the guy that has 50 plus catches, 600 plus yards receiving from that tight end role because he is much more like Brock Bowers in that mover tight end role. I think that's where he fits. Now, that's not to say there aren't some questions about Yorosk making the move over to Georgia. He was not an early enrollee. He was not a spring enrollee. He stayed at Stanford. He wanted to graduate from Stanford. I respect the heck out of it, man. Good for him. He's graduated from Stanford, but he's a summer guy. So he missed all those reps, all those practices during the spring that would have really helped him get up to speed with our offense and a head start on this 2024 season. So there is some concern there about picking up the playbook. But like I said earlier, there's a lot of carryover between what he did at Stanford at the tight end position and what he's going to be asked to do at George. Now, the terminology is going to be different, but he's a smart guy. I'm talking about a Stanford grad, guys. I'd like to think a guy that's played three years of college football, going to his fifth year, actually retro his first year. I like to think a guy that's that experienced in college football and has been, been that productive and is a guy that just graduated from Stanford. I like to think that picking up the offense is not going to be that much of a challenge for your roster. Now, I could be wrong. We'll find out. But I like to think that... It won't be much of an issue. But when you talk about production, guys, talk about the production with Benjamin Urosic, it is there, man. His production at Stanford speaks for itself. And again, go watch the video I did breaking down his film. I think you'll like what you see. So I think those are going to be the top two watches. I think you'll see a lot more 12 personnel like we have for years and years and years now. You'll see Oscar Duff that inline role, and you'll see Urosic more at that mover tight end role. But those are far from the only options we have in the tight end room. Lost and Lucky is another name that we can't forget about, guys. And he is a, he is a guy, when I talk about Benjamin Ross, he's another guy that people throw in my face, saying, like, did you just forget about Lawson Lucky? No, I didn't. 
I think Lawson Lucky is awesome, man. I was really high on him. Like I'm from Gwinnett County, Georgia. The kids from Gwinnett County, he's a Norcross guy. He's the guy I played multiple times in person. I've been on Lawson Lucky for a long time. I think he's going to be awesome. We also can't forget he, I will admit, like he was the guy last spring, in the spring coming to 2023 season, he was the freshman making all the waves and doing the same thing to start fall camp. Then he got hurt in fall camp and missed the first month or so of the season, which kind of set him back. But he's still that same guy. He's a really, really talented player. I think he's a he's, he's kind of a he's a guy that can do both. I think he could play that kind of inline role that Oscar Delp does, not as well right now because he just doesn't have as many reps doing that. I think he also has the athleticism and the ability as a receiver to play that that more mover tight role that Brock Bowers has played. So I do think he's going to play, man. I'm not forgetting about Lawson Lucky. And he does have a year in the system over your Rossick. So, like, he has a little bit more experience in this system, not overall in college football, but in this system. So, I mean, he's a guy that I do believe is going to help Georgia win games. But at the same time, right now, and I'll throw myself in on this, we're basing our affinity for Lawson Lucky on potential. That's, that's what it is, guys, is we haven't really seen it at the college level. I think he's going to end up being awesome. I feel pretty good about that. But we don't fully know. When you're talking about a guy like Benjamin Rossick, that's that's proven production. Like, again, three guys. Three guys the last three years have put up more yards in the tight end position than Benjamin Rossick, guys. So when you're talking about who is probably going to be the top guy to replace Brock Bowers, I'm betting on Benjamin Rossick. That's that's just me. And I could be wrong. Maybe it'll be lost and lucky. And if it is, that's great, man. I just want what's best for Georgia. And I, I'd be happy for loss and lucky, but right now I think he's probably going to end up being our number three tight end. I, I think he's, I think he's too good to not play. I think he's going to play a fair amount this year. I just don't think he's going to be the top option at the mover tight end role. But again, I could be wrong there. And then behind loss and lucky, we have two really promising freshmen. I think they're going to be really good players for Georgia. I just don't know if they're going to be ready this year. Unfortunately, Pierce Spurlin, the guy who I was very, very high on. He had he took a medical DQ, man. It's a pre-existing medical condition that they were monitoring, and it just got out of hand, and he had to uh, give up football. And that's really unfortunate. I think he had a really, really bright future ahead of him, but he is no longer in the picture. But Jane Riddell and Colton Heinrich are two incoming freshmen, part of this number one Georgia 2024 recruiting class, who I think are poised to continue Georgia's great tradition of tight end play. But again, I just don't expect them to play a ton this year, barring injury, but I mean – like, I hate to bring it up, but like we, we saw what happened with Brock Bowers last year, man. It's a contact sport. Things happen. So one or maybe both these guys at some point could very well be pressed into, into duty this year. And if they are, I think they can help us out. Riddell, big physical guy, 6'4", 235, former top 75 prospect nationally. And yeah, he's a big, strong guy. But he's also a really, really athletic player. That's a really strong receiver. Has awesome hands. He, can, he is a master at the con- at the contested catch. Great ball skills. Heinrich, coming out of high school, didn't really have the same profile that Riddell did. He wasn't nearly highly as rated. He was a three star guy and r- didn't really come in with a reputation as like a big time weapon in the passing game. But reportedly, he had a very, very strong spring. And we'll see if he can carry that over into fall camp and maybe into the 2024 season. And then I, I, got, I got to mention this guy. I think maybe the best of the bunch outside of Brock Bowers is still playing high school football, which is Ellis Williams down in Camden County. If you want to know like who is the next Brock Bowers, in reality, there probably is not a next Brock Bowers, but who's the next closest that, to that, it will probably end up being Ellis Williams. That guy is a freak. Unfortunately, he's just not going to be playing for Georgia this year. If he was on the roster this year, I think he'd be an impact player for us right now. As a, as a 17, 18 year old kid, but we'll have to wait a year for him, but he's going to be awesome. Now, the biggest question I have about this Georgia tight end room is pretty simple. How do all these pieces fit together? I've kind of laid out my thoughts on how they fit together, but I, I still don't know. Are we going to stick with Oscar Delp in that mover tight end role? Or do we want to give him a shot at that, at, or at that, stick with him at the inline tight end role? Or do we want to give him a shot at that mover tight end role? Which, again, coming out of high school, he was much more that kind of guy, but he's grown into and developed into a really strong player for us at that inline tight end role. Well, Lawson Lucky, could he potentially hold off Benjamin Yorosky? Is he going to be the guy? 
at the mover tight end role with DeRosa kind of backing him up? Are those guys just going to split reps at that mover tight end role? I don't know how all those pieces will fit together. And that's what fall camp is for, man. So it's, it's going to be really fascinating to watch how all those pieces in this super talented Georgia tight end room fit together. But one thing I can say is I am very confident that some way, somehow, those pieces will fit together and Georgia will once again have the best tight end unit in all of America. Man, is there going to be some property destroyed tonight. 26 to 21. Dog!